Glad to see you tonight for Brain Change Bible Study. Um, the just... Peniel Covenant Christian Center. This is my amazing husband, Senior Pastor, Pastor James. I'm Sabrina Wilkerson, his co-pastor, and Angela Dixon. Pastor Ann. Beautiful, beautiful people. We are so glad to be here tonight. Yes, we are. Yes, mm -hmm. we are. So, hey, go ahead on and uh, share this video with um, others. The pastor has unfriended me again. She keeps saying that, but I don't believe <laughs> that's true. I don't have a notice. Oh. Hey, let me start over. Let me take a little minute. Yeah, let me it, just get this share to some Okay, groups. now it's on. So that we can move forward and have a good time in the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Looking forward to some breakthrough with this word this evening. We're coming from Galatians 3. So go ahead and grab your Bible, your pen, and paper. Galatians 3 is where we're coming from. I found it. You're in there? I'm in there. Amen, amen. Well, good evening, Pearl Man. Good evening. Good to see you, church family. Good to see you. So we are still um, in the book of Galatians tonight. We're uh, breaking into Galatians 3. So before we move forward, let me go ahead on and open up with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. We esteem you high. Father God, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you continue Amen. to do in our thank lives. You, we thank you for your grace, unearned, unmerited favor in and on our lives. Your Amen. supernatural power and ability operating in our lives. Amen. Father God, we thank you that we have faith thank to believe you that what you've already Amen. spoken is coming thank to pass you. in our lives. That whatever you thank said, you. it's a done deal. Amen. And Father, we pray tonight that every eye will be open and anointed to see what the word will show us. Amen. Every ear is anointed to hear what the word will speak to us. And every heart is ready to receive, eagerly awaiting, mm -hmm. hallelujah, the seed of the word that will be planted, rooted, and grounded. Yes, that you. seed will grow up and produce mm -hmm. mature trees that will produce mature fruit that will last from one generation yes. to the next. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, tonight, y'all, we are moving into um, the book of Galatians, the third chapter, mm -hmm. the book of Galatians. Uh, the third chapter is where we are beginning um, tonight. So if you got your Bibles, go with us to Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians, the third chapter. Um, I, I'll start off reading on this. Um, you, you got the King James Version? I have King James. All right. Can you read verses one through... Um, Let's go um, verses 1 through 5. Okay. So I'm reading from Galatians chapter 3, starting with verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been... I, evidently. Evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, he therefore that ministereth to you in the spirit and worketh miracles among you, Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Mm. That reads so different. I've been reading this in the easy read version and the New Living Translation, and it sounds different. Similar, oh, but very yeah, different. Yeah. Don't worry about it, y'all. We're going we're gonna to take our time and uh, break this down in a uh, different translation to make sure we get a good understanding Amen. of this. But I, I, I do want to go back. Now, remember, it has been 14 years since Paul been to the church, to Galatia, mm -hmm. to the churches that he established in Galatia. Remember, Peter, he had to confront Peter. Peter who walked with Jesus. Peter that walked with Jesus because mm -hmm. they was trying to make the, the, the Gentiles 
act like the Jews. Mm -hmm. Live under the law. So you got the amplified, Pastor Angela? Yes, yes, yes. Verses 1 through 5 Ooh, amplified. Pastor Angela got good eyes. <laughs> Pray for me. Oh, you poor and silly and thoughtless and unreflecting and senseless Galatians. Who has uh, fascinated or bewitched or cast a spell over you? Unto whom, right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ the Messiah was openly and graphically set forth and por uh, portrayed as crucified. Verse 2. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as a result of obeying the law mm -hmm. and doing its works? Or was it by hearing the message of the gospel and believing it? Was it from observing a law of of rituals or from a message of faith? Verse three, are you so foolish and so senseless and so silly? Having begun your new life spiritually with the Holy Spirit and you are now uh, reaching perfection by dependence on the flesh. Verse four, have you suffered so many things and experienced so uh, much all, have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for nothing? to no purpose. If it's really, uh, if it's really is to no purpose and in vain, verse five, then does he who supplies you with his uh, miraculous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you do so on the grounds of your doing what the law demands or because of your believing in the adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you heard. All right, I want to read from the Passion Translation. It says, what has happened to you Galatians to be acting so foolishly? You must have been under some evil spell. Didn't God open your eyes to see the meaning of Jesus' crucifixion? Wasn't he revealed to you as the crucified one? So answer me this. Did the Holy Spirit come to you as a reward for keeping all the Jewish laws? No, no. You received him as a gift because you believed in the Messiah. Your new life in the anointed one began with the Holy Spirit giving you a new birth. Why then would you so foolishly turn from living in the Holy Spirit by trying to finish by your own works? Mm -hmm. Have you endured all these trials and persecutions for nothing? Let me ask you again. What does the lavish supply of the Holy Spirit in your life and the miracles of God's tremendous power have to do with you keeping religious laws. The Holy Spirit is poured out upon us through the revelation and power of faith, not by keeping the law. Mm. Y'all want to go ahead on and uh, start out? I, I was just wanted to ask a question so we're not the only one talking and thinking about it for those of you listening. Um, why does Paul call the Galatians foolish and bewitched? So that's a question for you. Why does Paul call the Galatians foolish and bewitched? If you can type that response in the comments and we will get to that as soon as we can. When I saw that word bewitched, I thought about that movie we used to look at. That was a movie, that. Bewitched. A TV show, a TV show called Bewitched. Amen. You've been tricked. You've been bamboozled. Hoodwinked. Mm. Was he just upset and say, you fools? You know, we can fly off out our mouth and call people fools. Mm. Why do you think Paul called the people of Galatians foolish, Galatia, Ga mm. Galatia mm. foolish and bewitched? Mm. Amen. I know that there's a delay, so I'm waiting on comments. But if not, we'll go ahead and answer that or, or say what we think about it um well paul had remember years ago he'd already taught them about the good news of jesus christ and how to receive salvation and now they are turning from which they were taught they're turning from the word of god and going back to practicing the laws the jewish laws so mm -hmm. that is probably why he's saying why are you being foolish why are you doing this how who's tricked you who's fooled you who's put a spell on you or bewitched you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well it's sort of like this <clears throat> you 
been listening, let's say, to us for the past few months, mm -hmm. and we've been telling you about the Holy Spirit, told you how to receive the Holy Spirit, but now all of a sudden, you go to a, you start either visiting or watching another pastor, and they tell you in order for you to be saved, you got to tear it all night long. Mm -hmm. You got to go in you got to do all this stuff. Gotta work in you got to work for your salvation. Mm -hmm. and You've been tricked because we have, if we have shown you the word mm -hmm. and your spirit is telling you, go back to the word. Something is causing you to get off track. You've been tricked. You've been fooled. Mm -hmm. And now you're acting outside of the realm of God's word. Because somebody done told you that you need to do all this stuff because maybe you, you could have came out of a church the way they did all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the point. I was just going to say, and these were church people who mm -hmm. was telling them that these weren't people who had not received. Mm -hmm. These were people who were in the church. So people who walked with Jesus. You mean to exact. tell me, Pastor, you can be mis misled by those who supposed to be teaching the gospel and following the word and they were in the word before you were? Yes, because people come up with their own laws. They come up with their own doctrines and stuff like that for what you need to be doing in order for God to bless you and to save you. When the only thing you got to do is confess, is receive Jesus, mm -hmm. have faith. And faith come by hearing and what? Hearing by hearing the word. By the word of God. So if you are in, in the word and you hearing and faith, you it. people can't you trick you. Mm -hmm. But the Galatians were being tricked because they knew or have heard of, you know, people like Peter who walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times as Christians, we get caught up in titles. Mm -hmm. We get true. caught up in positions. But what we need to do, everybody need to read the Bible for themselves. Mm -hmm. it's, well, that, go ahead, Pastor Andrew. That's You know, as you all were saying earlier, um, a lot of times when, when we're coming into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and learning the word, you feel like, okay, the person that's coming to me, if they've been in the word longer than I have, they should know more than me. But they had gotten their truth from the one that founded their mm -hmm. church, right? You know, their they who brought them up, who you know ex, uh, right. showed and them the way right. of you know becoming a Christian, you know, a Gentile Christian. Now the other people, as you all said, they had already been into the Mosaic Law, the Ju Judaism, understanding how that custom ran and everything, and they didn't want to give that up just like that. They it was like like some people say it can't be that easy. We got you got to be able to do. The other things that we were doing, you got to keep doing that and accept Jesus. So a lot of times they get, people get it crossed up because they said it can't be that easy. Yeah. Believing in Christ is that, is, is that easy. God, he, when he, when he gave the law, he gave it for a reason. It wasn't, the law wasn't bad. You know, the law mm -hmm. showed them that they couldn't live it. They couldn't live it. They could they not live it. Exactly. So now they want to make somebody else do something they can't do. And, and see, and. The Gentiles were not who, who Jesus came back for first. He came back for the lost tribe of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's the 12 tribes. Not, not a land. It was a people. Mm -hmm. Got to understand that first. Got to know who Israel was. Mm -hmm. Israel today is not what we're calling it mm -hmm. over in the Middle East. Israel was the 12 tribes. That's Israel. Mm -hmm. The 12 tribes of Jacob. If you go back in the Old Testament, you'll see that. But you have to understand something too is that if you're not careful, because you could be a babe in Christ and been in church 20 years because you have not established your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But you got to establish that relationship for yourself so people cannot easily trick you. And Paul went on to tell them it was revealed to you as to why Jesus was crucified. Mm -hmm. You know, since his crucifixion you do not have to do all the things that the law said we had to do. 
Because Jesus, he fulfilled it all. He fulfilled it. Amen. Well, I would say sometimes we're, we are lazy Christians. That's me included. Sometimes we're lazy. We would rather just listen to what, as we say, the pastor said or my pastor said, mm -hmm. instead of going back and reading it for yourself, reading it in different translations so that you can understand it. Ask God, what does this mean when you don't understand instead of always depending on calling someone else? God is right there. Ask him when you are reading the Bible to help you understand it and then use whatever study tools, um, a concordance or the Bible dictionary or something to help you understand those words mm -hmm. you may not understand. But a lot of times we're being lazy. We want someone to just give it to us. Kind of like when we're helping our children with their homework and they're not, they can't figure out how to multiply or to um, add or divide or do whatever it is they're doing. And we start getting frustrated and we just tell them the answer mm -hmm. and just say, here, the answer is 10. And they have all the correct answers and get to school and don't know how to do it. But you know, you said something that was important. See, when this was written to Galatia, it was one letter. Mm -hmm. We have the benefit uh, of owning our yes. own Bible. Yes. She got a Bible, she got a Bible. I got the electronic version. Bible here on my cell phone. We have that benefit now of all being able to read this word to where we don't have to listen to someone. We can read the word. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I will say this. You hear a word from a pastor, they use a scripture. You write, better, it, down. You, you write it down. You go find it and you read it for yourself. Mm -hmm. In different form, different translations to make sure you're understanding that correctly. And you pray and you ask for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you mm -hmm. because this Bible is full of covenants. Yep. And if you're reading and you don't understand what covenant you're reading under, you'll think that it applies to you and it exactly. don't. Exactly. Like grace. We are now under grace. Yes. So it's important that you read your Bible for yourself. But as we look into verse 2, you know... Um, we got a response to... Oh, yeah. To the South the lights. Paul felt the people were being manipulated and Paul thought someone used magic or an evil spell to turn people from the word of God. He, from the way they were acting, because when you teach someone something and you know that you've taught it and you broke it down in the simplest form and he probably had them to repeat it mm. and they explain it mm. back to him so he'll know they understand mm. and then he went away and when he came back to Galatia, now they're changing. They're, they have strayed away from what the word said and went back to doing the old way of doing things, going back mm. into the law. Mm. Oh, they hit a spot. So mm. I can imagine him saying, are you foolish? Mm. Has someone put a spell on you? Are mm. you bewitched? Because that's what you acting like. You acting crazy. Mm. That's crazy talk you're doing. That's foolishness. Mm. Hey, y'all, I'm going to uh, say something. It's like this. If you ever been to a church conference, you go to that conference, the whole while you're at that conference, you fired up. Ready to go. You fired up. Take over the world. All these things you plan on doing <laughs> well, when, I get when back you home. get back home. <laughs> You don't heard all that word. Because you in the you in the atmosphere, you getting strength. Yes. Yeah, but then what happened? Who came and snatched all that fire from <laughs> under you. On your way home in the car. <laughs> yeah. Who what snatch well, all know. that fire out of you? And listen, listen, I'm talking about me too now. The enemy read it on the other side yeah. of the door. Yeah. He's ready to take it. He, he already knows, so you got to understand. And sometimes you hear the same word you heard at your own church. <laughs> but this word you hear now is different because it's a confirmation. Yeah. It's a confirming word to what you've been hearing. And I, and I mean, hey, you on fire for Jesus. You ready to change the world. Yeah. And Paul probably felt that same way about the church at Galatia. What happened? What happened to y'all? When I left y'all, y'all was full of fire. Y'all was doing miracles. Y'all was seeing things. Y'all was in this Amen. word. Good explanation. That was 14 years he was gone. Yeah. He was gone a long time. But still, the word don't change. Pastors, don't go around the other people's churches 
preaching and teaching around the world and forget at home. Amen. Because somebody talking to your people Amen. at the house. Amen. And so see, don't leave them too long. Mm -hmm. And this is probably what happened. Paul was going around. He was setting up other churches mm -hmm. in other places. And they probably needed Paul at year seven mm -hmm. or year three. See, it's like to this. Reinforce. Mm -hmm. It's like right now. Remember last week I didn't pray? Mm -hmm. So some people told me they were waiting. What happened? Because mm -hmm. they were ready for that word. Last mm -hmm. Tuesday. Last Tuesday. I understand. Because I was fired up and ready to go Friday morning. Mm -hmm. But yet and still, too, we, we have a tendency that if we don't hear, and see we do this with God too, mm -hmm. that if we don't hear from God, we'll start doing what? Listening to other things, thinking that we miss God. Mm -hmm. We have not missed God. We have to just be patient. Mm -hmm. Patiently wait. That's it. So remember the word that God told you. Yes. Don't let that slip. And then don't let nobody That's else good. come and change what God already Go showed you and told word. you. Go back Amen. To that that's what they that's what you was doing. That's yes. what happened then. But this is now. Jeez. God has now done a new thing. Amen. And the new thing that he did right here was the crucifixion of Christ. Mm -hmm. They were still working under the law, with the, thinking about the animal sacrifices and all this other God stuff. God now moved on the cut, better. Cutting the skin and all this. Cutting the skin mean, and all that. No, I mean, working for it. Yeah. Think about it this way. Let's say if, if we were under the law, right? If we were still on the law. Let's say I owed you. $2,000. Mm -hmm. And this at the end of the seven years. Mm -hmm. Under the law, at the end of seven years, you got to forgive me of my debts. All 2000 All 2000 200000 Okay, some of that wasn't that bad. So, <laughs> so now let me show you what the world did. You mean I want to have to pay my mortgage? Mm. The, world, <laughs> the world took that word. Yeah, they did. They can repo your car, mm -hmm. seven years. sell your car, seven years. and at the end of the seven years, they don't collect that debt. Before seven years is up, they sell your debt. To someone else. That company now gets seven years to come yeah. after you. That's bewitched right there. That's that, yeah, that, 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 right? bewitched for real. The world said, we're going to take something from the Bible and turn it around. Twisted. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't even recognize that, don't even realize that. That's but good. see, the world won't That's forgive like God did. See, Thank God you. sent Jesus to forgive us of all of our debts. Pay the price for yes. our debts. And this is what Paul is saying. Jesus was revealed to you Galatians. Mm -hmm. Why he went on the cross. What the crucifixion was for. You've been forgiven. We don't have to live by the law. Amen. We ain't sacrificing no rams and no goats. Because the Amen. sacrifice we make with them, we call it dinner. <laughs> Lamb chops. Curry goat. Manage water. Mm. We, it's all dinner. Come on. Come on, y'all. Mm. Let's move on. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. He say, so he, he he's saying here, he says, so ask me this, did, did the Holy Spirit come to you as a reward for keeping all Jewish, all the Jewish law? He said, no, you received him as a gift because you believed in the I Messiah. Let's talk believe. about the Holy Ghost. Mm. Jesus, when he was with his disciples, told them, he said, "The whole, the come." He, Jesus said, "If I don't come, the Comforter mm -hmm. will not come, and He will Amen. be in you." Mm -hmm. Then, after the resurrection, He told them, "Hey, go. You're gonna wait." And then He said, "You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yeah. So, after the Holy Ghost comes upon you." You shall receive power, yes. and there'll yes. be evidence of that yes. power yes. operating in your life. You may not speak in tongues, but a generational curse has been broken. Yes. Huh? You may not preach the gospel, but God may use you to lay a hand on somebody and yes. comfort them. Mm -hmm. Because what? The Holy Ghost is upon you, and you did not receive yes. that Holy Ghost because you went to I college, Ooh, got a degree in ministry. Good. You didn't receive that Holy Ghost because you was cleaning toilets, making them look like gold in the church bathrooms. Because you were getting there early. Because you went to every service. Yes. Or took communion. Yes. 
uh, uh, made the past the dinner or oh, that's yeah. because your name was on the top of the list when it came <laughs> to tithes and offerings on the wall money? in the back. No, or, or dudes, or, or, dudes, or, dudes, or whatever you want to call them. There's some churches still doing that. that. There's some churches still doing that. I mean, yeah, I don't mm. know. But but you did not your your hard work. Did it, it, it you is didn't not receive the spirit by your works. Yeah, you don't receive God's spirit by that. We receive the spirit of God by believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want the Holy Ghost, let me say this. I'm going to step on some toes. Uh -oh. You cannot catch the Holy Ghost. You can't run him down. Oh, Jesus. You can't catch him. Explain. Them drums on Sunday morning, that keyboard, that good singing. Mm -hmm. That's not catching the Holy Ghost. That's our emotions making us do what we did in the club dance. Mm. That's one of the effects. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't catch the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You catch fish. Mm -hmm. You can catch some rabbits. Mm -hmm. You catch a cold. Mm -hmm. But you do not catch God's Holy, Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. You receive, receive that. Yeah. Catch or receive. You receive that. See, like right here. Let me show y'all what I mean. This bottle represents the Holy Spirit. Jesus has died. Now Sabrina, if she wants to receive the Holy Spirit, I give it to her. Can it's a free gift. Mm -hmm. it's, but you notice what she did. Here is the gift. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to her to take it. Mm -hmm. Let it go. But if she don't take this gift, it's just they're waiting. He on standby. Wow. Like a, like a standby flight. He on standby. He's waiting. Go ahead. Soon as she receive him. Mm -hmm. Now I receive him. She receive him. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit has now has the power to operate in her life. Because she, how did she receive the Holy Spirit? By faith. By faith. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I will have the power. Yes. She believes. So, so yes. we don't receive the opposite. The Holy Spirit cannot operate in our lives because we're choosing not to believe by saying things like, it can't be that easy. It no, is. I'm going to have to do this in the church. I'm going to have to go run and do this. I got to go, got to do all these works, all the things. that. And these things are things that is needed to run the church. We need someone to clean the church, mm -hmm. to help with uh, youth ministry and praise teams and uh, ministers or music. We need all of those mm -hmm. things. That helps the church run smoothly and help um, use the gifts that God has given us in the ministry is being used to help build up the ministry, but most importantly, receiving the spirit of God so God's power can work um, in you and through you. And then you, when you hear it, when you hear that you can receive God or receive Jesus and what Jesus did, his death, burial, and resurrection, taking our place, you believe that. You believe it. And then once you believe it, it's like when you take the water, now you consume that water. You drink it. When you when you read, read the oil, that's you, good. Yes. When you when read the word, word. And now the power now that you receive now begin to quench the thirst, begin to help you, nourish you, and, and do yes. what it needs it's to like do. It's like eating that word. Every day You're eating that word. Yes. You might be on one scripture oh. for a long time. Yeah. Like Amen. there is one, um, we said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I remember Miss Lexi, Lexi May Child taught us that. But when I read that in a different version as an adult and I bought my children a different version Bible, it said, mm -hmm. the Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. Mm. So that, that, that meant something. I have all that I need. I'm mm. never going to be without. Yes. Because the Lord is my shepherd. Mm. He's my shepherd. He cares for me. Mm-hmm. He feeds me, he clothes me, he heals provides, me, protects. provides, protect yes. me from the onslaught of the enemy. If I get sick, he's going to nurse me back to health. Mm -hmm. But I have to be in the world. I have to be with him. Yes. I have to believe him. I have to read that word. So when we're reading that word, we're being fed spiritually. That's mm -hmm. when we. you may have heard someone say, I, I've just got this spir spiritual food. And now I'm getting ready to go get me some physical food from the house or from the restaurant or whatever. Yes, yes. And let me say this. When you receive the Holy Spirit, that's a whole nother baptism. Mm -hmm. yes. that's, that's, that's a whole nother baptism. When you receive the Holy Spirit of God, 
you getting baptized with the basically with the fire of God, with the power of God to do those things that you normally cannot do to overcome those things that you've been battling with Amen. that we all battle with. Listen, we all go through trials and tribulations, no but we have that. a helper. Mm -hmm. See right now, that's the difference when we're saved. Yep. Yeah, right now, while we're here um, doing this Bible study, the Holy Spirit is interceding on all of our behalf. Amen. Those that are watching and those who are sitting on this panel, Hey, the Holy Spirit is interceding right now for all of us because he knows what's coming in the future. Amen. We don't know. Amen. So we receive that. That's where we get that guidance. That's what God is able to lead us besides still water mm -hmm. because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I know he leads us because we don't... Um talk about Bible study before we Bible study. It's just like ready, set, Everybody go. read. Everybody we, reading the scripture for themselves. We know we're coming from Galatians, Galatians 3. Mm -hmm. We don't know how far we're going to go into it. Right. We just read it all and we just ask God to help us and as we are Spirit. going. The we depend on the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so that we flow together and we take time and let the other person talk. We never know when someone's going to jump in mm -hmm. and start talking, but we have to be mature enough not to say, well, I was talking mm -hmm. and why you talk more than me? We just have to let it go. Like, I always plan not to say anything. <laughs> the Holy Spirit got other plans. Holy yeah, Spirit. I don't know why she keep planning that. <laughs> it says... Verse 3. Verse 3. So your new life in the anointed one began with the Holy Spirit giving you a new birth. Why then would you so foolishly turn from, from living in the spirit by trying to finish by your own words? Mm. New birth. Mm. See, now we know that when we go down in the water, we get, we get baptized with water. Mm -hmm. It's a representation of our old life being, being, washed away. being washed away, coming up in new life. Mm -hmm. It's the same Fire. way. New start. Yep. It's the same way with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When, when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, new life truly begins. Because what's happening is, as you listen to the Holy Spirit, not something, the Holy Spirit Christians, we don't listen to something. Amen. Something got us in some predicaments that we have been in. Some of us may still be in, but the Holy Spirit will bring us out and keep us from certain things. Amen. Amen. He will keep us from certain things. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit is there to be our guide. He's there to be a helper to, to, to strengthen us when we're weak. So right here we see we have this and we shouldn't turn away. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't turn away because all of us, including you all, all of us got our own trials and tribulations that we're dealing with. Amen. But thank God we don't have to deal with them by ourselves. Amen. 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 We have Thank a, God. An interceder. Yes. A comforter. Yes. Strengthener. Yes. And we have an advocate, an advocate a with the Father. Yes. He's pleading on our behalf. He's Amen. a counselor. You know that voice that sometimes sounds like your mama voice or may sound like your own voice mm -hmm. giving you some directions. <laughs> Actually, I, I love it. Giving you some destructions. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Some directions <laughs> on where to go. And instructions on what to do and how to do it. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is a destructor. Yes, yes, yes. Not a destructor, die, D I structure. He's the one that gives us directions and instructions at the same time. Amen, amen. And when we follow his voice, we learn hey, I didn't get this by working, mm -hmm. I got this by faith. Amen. We didn't get it by depending on our flesh. Amen. Uh, to, to see how we can work out our own self. Yes. We got it through depending on the Holy Spirit and depending on what Christ had already done. Yes. For us. Based on what he did. Amen. And But now let me say this. Yes, sometimes difficulties, blockages, they do arise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we all get discouraged. Why? Because we may not see what God has promised us. Mm -hmm. It's taking too long for us. Yes. We want it now. Mm -hmm. Yes. God showed you 20 years ago you coming off that job. You ain't came off yet. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Amen. But you got to stay in faith and keep doing what you've been doing mm -hmm. with joy in your heart. Pastor, you don't understand who. Yes, I do. 
I like getting up praying, but I don't, I don't like getting up going to work. <laughs> Trust me, I'm, I'm telling you. I can get up and pray seven days a week, but I don't want to get up and go to work seven days. Don't want to go five, three or two. <laughs> but I'm just saying we all have to Amen. let the Holy Spirit be our God. Because yes. see, I can tell you right now, every last one of us can look back over our lives and think of some things we would have did different Amen. if we would have listened to the voice that was Amen. speaking to us even when we were not saved. That's when we say something told me. Not yes. Me. Yes. That's the Holy Spirit saying, don't do it. Mm. Yes. Don't go. Because grandma and, and granddaddy had done prayed on you. They had done oiled you up and down. You know, they prayed for your mama and your daddy. They prayed until they die. And their yeah. prayers were not going unanswered. You know, the, the Bible says that uh, God always give us a way of escape when we're in trouble. But. <laughs> That doesn't mean we're going to accept it. We have to choose it. Choose mm -hmm. to accept it. Choose to listen to the Holy Spirit. I Amen. Mean, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to make us do anything. God is not going to force us, force his will or his plans on us. He give us a choice. Mm -hmm. All but day long. But he says um, that we have to choose so that ourselves and our children will live. So we have to choose Christ. And if we live for Christ and we teach our children the way, the things of Christ, it continues on throughout the generations. Amen. So we, we, we have to be patient with yeah. God's spirit. And, and um, yes, you know, and in verse four, you know, hey, listen, all your trials and tribulations, they're not for nothing. All them tears all the you prices. cried, God collected every last one of them. Mm -hmm. I've cried some tears, I'm telling you. I may not have cried in front of you, but I've cried some tears. Amen. Why, God? Why me? Why I have to go through this? I go to church every Sunday. So I was telling them about the works I did. Mm -hmm. I do Born this. Woman, I gave up this. this why me? It's not in vain. But the Lord brought me out, mm -hmm. and I'll be shouting now. When something happened now, I'm like, oh, that ain't nothing. Mm. You know, I'll get it. I'm, I'm waiting for the other side of this, and I'm patiently endure. Are we seeking an earthly reward or a heavenly blessing? Mm. Ask yourself that question. Mm. Am I seeking an earthly reward or a heavenly blessing? Because in the midst of trials and tribulations, God still blessed you. Yes, in the, in the midst of this pandemic yeah we're we're yet we're still, still here. blessed we still we, are here we may have had to adjust and make some changes about how we get things done but we're still here we still here still speaking the word you still got the internet you still on the phone or tablet or computer you still got a paycheck you still, still got, got food even if you went to the food pantry or whatever you still you got food god still blessed god you made still a way made a way and see, I think part of the Galatians getting tricked is they took their eyes off of the teaching that they had received. They took their eyes off Christ. That's what I'm saying. They put it on man. Mm -hmm. the, on flesh. On what flesh. The, what I can do to obtain my salvation. Yes. See, and like I said, you can't work for salvation. Mm -hmm. Salvation is a free gift. You just have to receive it. Mm -hmm. You cannot work for the Holy Spirit. Amen. You just receive it. I don't care how many times you ran around the church. That was not nobody catching the Holy Ghost. Because if was it was, it, it, it was. Because what did Paul ask them? He told them, he said, how did you receive the Spirit? Mm -hmm. He said, you and received Christ. him as a gift because you believed in Christ. Amen. Amen. The word and you believe. Because you believe in Christ, Amen. you receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not because you believe in the drum beat, and I'm not knocking nobody running around the church I like the shouting, ride. doing all that stuff. I like do the your dance. I, 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 look, I love the dance yeah, too. Dance. But I want to be clear because I don't want no confusion. We need more than just the dance. When yes. The dance, when the music stops, then what? Exactly. When you go home, then what? Then like what? You got to go home. Because, see, the evidence of the Holy Spirit 
working in your life mm -hmm. is the changes mm -hmm. that's occurring on the inside of you and manifesting on the outside. Mm -hmm. yes. That's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. Oh, the three C's. Your conduct, mm -hmm. your, character, your character, and your, and your conversation. conversation. We're going to know. You, you'll Holy see Spirit that when you have the Holy Spirit working in you. Because the conduct, character, and conversation is coming from Christ. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's not coming from us because the way I used to conduct myself. Now, you might still falter. But I'm just saying. But we'll see the change. see the change. The change is Christ. Even you will The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the Holy Spirit doing it. Because otherwise, you would see the old person, that old nature coming that out. That cuts you out. Mm -hmm. and, and also, too, others will see the change in you before you see it. Mm -hmm. They'll say things like, Oh, girl, you changed because I remember back in the day, you would have been gay. Them the business. Mm -hmm. They're one of my favorite ones. You done lost some weight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got rid of stress. I got rid of the ones who was causing me the problems. Mm -hmm. I got a fresh start through, the, through me receiving the Holy Spirit by faith. Yes, I lost some weight. Amen. Gave some things up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. You know, like I said, if anybody want to run, you run on, just make sure your church got some insurance in case you fall. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop funny. playing. But seriously, you receive the Holy Spirit by faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. Not by me speaking, laying my hands on you. It's by you believing in the Messiah, the anointed one, Yeshua, mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. the bread of life. The Lamb of Judah. That's how you receive the Holy Spirit. One thing that was evident back then when um, um, we know in the book of Acts, one thing that was evident of them receiving the Holy Spirit was they spoke in tongues. Mm -hmm. Speaking in tongues is a gift. Mm -hmm. That was evidence then. So you have to understand you receiving the Holy Spirit will produce evidence in your life. You may not speak in tongues, but you may all of a sudden give up something that you've been doing for the past 30 years. I want to get a word of wisdom. Yes. Lay it on hands. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, hey, you want to break down verse 5 again? Uh, go to verse 5, man. And, uh... Okay. Verse 5. Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you, do so. The grounds of your doing. Wait a minute, let me read that again. Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculous, miraculously among you, do so on the grounds of your doing, what the law demands, or because of your believing uh, believing in and adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you heard. So basically, it's about the message that we heard about mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, not about the mir miracles happened because of the message yeah. of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. not because of what they did. Go ahead. Now, I should have had my easy free version. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I pull it up for you. ERV verse 5 says this. It says, does God give you the spirit because you follow the law? Does God work miracles among you because you follow the law? No, God gives you his spirit and works miracles among you because you heard the message about Jesus and believed it. Mm -hmm. So we see that, that what? We've been through some things, but the law has nothing to do with the spirit. You know, you saying that, hey, you don't eat uh, pork or you don't eat this right here. They ain't got nothing to do with the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, people tell my, well, you know, Saturday is the Sabbath day. And hey, I got to, I, I don't do nothing on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Do you go to a restaurant? Do you go, do you go to the grocery store? Mm -hmm. See, all those, they ain't got nothing to do with the spirit of God. Because every day is the Lord's day. Every day. every day is holy unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now under the law, yes, they kept the Sabbath holy. Mm -hmm. But now under Christ, every day is holy. Amen. 
We are Christians every day, every day, every day. We are Christians. We're not just Christians on Sunday. We're Christians every day. The Holy Spirit operates every day in our life. Amen. And that just brought me back to something. When Mariah was born, she, the doctors gave me their facts, said that she was going to be blind and have cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. Now, when they gave me that news, I immediately called the saints to pray. And they put me in a counseling class because they said I was in, in denial. I was in denial. Uh -huh. I'm like, I'm not in denial. I'm believing God. I'm trusting God. I see, you know, what the, uh, the facts say, but I know what the word of God says and what the truth say. So Amen. the miracles that came through her life, the power of God healing her, uh, healing her, you know, she they say she's not how old. She's 23, I believe. 23, she's 23 yeah, and she's not blind. Point. She's mm -hmm. able to walk. Nothing she don't have wrong. several Nothing. palsy. So the miracle and the power didn't happen because I worked to get it to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I trusted and believe it. What what the word word of God say, miracles still happen. Amen. Healing still happened. Deliverance still, still happened. happened. Amen. And see, I didn't have to pay a thousand dollars to nobody to, to pray for her. You didn't have to get no hundred dollar no, home. I didn't have to do that. <laughs> see that you she you, you believe. Amen. And look, y'all know what she said. She, she called, called the on saints. the saints. Yes. Not the eights, <laughs> but the saints to pray. Amen. See, you know who you calling on no when you need you need prayer. Right no, no, I mm -hmm. might have cried, but you at me. that point, I'm telling you. At that. some point she probably cried, but yeah. at least she had enough. In within her, let me call on some prayer warriors. Exactly. So and speak the word. Who's going to speak the word? Amen. Not me, play, play people. Mm -mm. Or what did James say? If there's any Somebody with some sick power. among you, yes, let them oh. call for who? The elders, the elders of, the of the church. Mm -hmm. So we see here. I like what what that verse said in verse five. He said, you know, we didn't do that. He said, God gives you His Spirit and works miracles among you. Yes. Because you heard the message about Jesus yes. and believed yes. it. Yes. My shirt says, my faith moved mountains. Mm -hmm. Do you believe your faith in Jesus Christ can move mountains mm -hmm. in your own life? Amen. Amen. You have to believe that you word believe. for yourself. That's I can't do it for you. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I can promise you, I am not coming to your house to pray, to pray for yeah. you to believe that God will turn your household around. You got to do gotta, that. Amen. You got to receive we, that for yourself. We can touch and agree with you. Stand amen. On you're stand on what you're believing yes. for like any other saint. We can stand on what you're believing for, but what are you believing? Yes. We amen. can be praying that somebody is healed or the situation changes or the child come back home or the spouse amen. come back and, and serve the Lord and love the family, but what are you believing? And then when someone's praying with you, you can't then go back when, when the saints are gone mm. or the people that you've called to pray with you have left, the, have left your atmosphere, you hung up the phone, and then you say something crazy out your mouth to negate it. Mm. You mm. can't go back and, and take all that prayer away because we do that with our own mouth. Mm -hmm. We curse our own self with our own mouth. Mm -hmm. Man, this child ain't gonna never change. I'm tired. I'm tired of praying for them. You just canceled out all the prayer you asked the saints to do. And look, you cannot stop praying. You can't men stop. ought to always pray. Always. That's what Paul said. We gotta keep praying. Never cease. So let me read verse six from the easy read. It says, "The scriptures say the same thing about Abraham. Abraham believed God, and because of this faith, he was accepted as one who was right with God." Mm -hmm. Now, y'all know that that was quoted from Genesis 15, 6. Mm -hmm. But we know, what did God first speak to Abram? He first told Abram in Genesis 12 to get thee out of thy father's house, mm -hmm. out of thy father's land, from out of that country, and go to a land where I will show thee. Mm -hmm. he See that? Get to get me. He ain't even tell him where he was going. Just hey, get, pack your stuff. Start walking. Faith walk. That's what he told him. <laughs> That's Pack up all right. your stuff and take your family and, and, and move. Mm. And, and Abraham nephew Lot saw, wait a minute, I'm packing I'm, up. I'm, gonna go I'm going to. <laughs> but Abraham trusted God enough in the midst of everything that was going on. Yes. He believed God Amen. and he followed what God said. Mm. And Sarah, his wife, went with him. Yes. Sarah didn't do like Lot's wife did. 
Man, she, I know she that's didn't disobey. She walked with him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She went with her husband. Mm -hmm. So you have to be willing to hear God's voice Amen. and respond obediently. Mm -hmm. Don't Here call the pastor. For confirmation. Mm -hmm. What you think about this, Pastor? Mm -hmm. You talk to God about it. Yeah, or what the, that do what he said. I don't supersede God. See, somebody waiting on a word for God to tell you what to do. Let me tell you what he said. Do move. Do it. Move. Just Get off your behind and do something. Take them ideas off of paper out your head and put them to work. From, from your head to paper to researching it and now do something. And do something with it. You keep saying I'm waiting on God. You ain't waiting on God because God already gave you instructions on what to do. And see, just like Abraham, Abraham didn't know where he was going, but God gave him direction. And while he was on the way, God was talking to him, a little bit at a time, showing him where to go, what to do. That's why we know we always need God because he, he don't give us everything at one time. He right. give us a little bit at a time. That that means why we have to keep talking to him. And then he's building a relationship. That's true. Because it's like if somebody tell you to do something and you didn't do the first thing they told you to do, why should they go to the next thing? Yeah. Exactly. So when he would begin to move, God began to give him instructions on the next thing. Oh, I got the a, next thing. a good example, and it's not biblical. Here's the example. When I taught middle school, um, coming to the end of the nine weeks, the grading period when grades are gonna be due. Mm -hmm. The students will say, Mrs. Wilkerson, can I have extra credit? And I tell them every time. We had this conversation at the beginning of the nine weeks. I told you there is no extra credit because I'm not grading no extra work. There is no extra credit because you didn't do the first work. Why would I give you more work when you didn't do the first work? You didn't do last week's homework assignment. So why am I going to give you extra work? Why would God give us the next set of instructions when we didn't follow the first instruction he gave us? He's not going to do that. He said, start working on your credit. Mm -hmm. Get your credit together. We ain't do that yet. We still Black Friday shopping. Mm -hmm. We still Amazon or whatever, wherever you go online shopping. We haven't made the first move to start doing what God told us to do. So why would he give us the next thing? It's not going to happen. He's a good God, and he's not going to... Uh, he, he loves knows, us that much. Yeah, he loves us, and he already he's knows... He's not going to let us make that mistake. ...the next move, because yeah. if you're, if you're not... Move, you can't handle You can't handle the next move, because you you can't you didn't even handle the first wow. one. So wow. his wisdom would know, just like us as parents, Jesus. we're not going to keep giving our kids the next thing, the next elevation, or the next big bigger responsibility mm. if they're not handling... The one we gave them the first time because that's gonna put too much pressure oh, on them. Lord, they gonna stop and turn around. They leaving their bicycle out there in the driveway and they don't got ran over three times. I bought a bicycle. Why? Yeah. Why I'm gonna? Why would I go get you a car? Yeah, you, something gonna happen to the car. <laughs> now that's a bigger truck. You bigger won't, problem. You won't put gas in, in the in the little scooter you got. So that's love. <laughs> so because I love you, I'm not gonna let you go out there and get into that. Amen. Wow. So you have to know, hey, you have to believe, you have to trust God, you have to have faith. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit Holy is Holy. here to help us, to guide and direct our lives. And we have to, because verse 7 says this, it says, So you should know that the true children of Abraham are those who have faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are Abraham's seed. We receive it through faith. Mm -hmm. See, when, when God told Abraham to step out, Abraham left. Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure he was comfortable amongst his family. Mm -hmm. well, like we usually are. He was comfortable among his peers. Mm -hmm. But now he gave this voice telling him, hey, listen here, Abraham. I need you to go down there, get a U-Haul, pack up all your stuff and deal. Mm -hmm. Where I'm going? North. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just start driving. I'll show you where you're going. Wow. There's a movie that I love to watch mm -hmm. called The Book of Eli. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eli was blind, but he knew that Bible. Mm. It was in him. It, amen. And the man who was trying to get that word, get that Bible from Eli. 
When he got it, he couldn't read it. <laughs> it was in a different language. See, when you begin to follow God, he changed your language so the devil is confused because what? He can't understand the language that you and God have because you communicate to God by faith. And you respond with your actions. Do y'all ever think as a time that there are times that pastors don't want to throw in the towel, but because of faith, they keep on pastoring? They keep on teaching? Ask your pastor. If they'll be honest with you, they'll tell you. If they can be honest with you, some people are not mature enough to receive the truth. Yep. Yep. So you have to understand and know that, hey, we walk by faith. We live by faith. And and if you're going to be in this thing uh, with God, you're going to be on this Christian journey, hey, you, you better get your faith up. Faith up. Get your faith up. Amen. Get your trust up. Get your quality time with God up. Pastor, you don't understand. I don't have time. Listen, when you go in the bathroom, get off Facebook and, and, and get in the book while you're sitting on the toilet. Mm -hmm. Open your Bible. Read it. Jonathan McRimmon say, make room. Yes. You have to because if you don't make room with your faith, how else will you be able to move to the next level that God has for you? Give up some of that Instagram time, that TV time, that chatting with your friends time. And the words say, faith comes by, by hearing. hearing. Amen. And hearing what? By, by the, the word, word of God. God. So you have to hear this word so you cannot be easily fooled yeah. or bamboozled. Because trust me. Bewitched. Ladies, y'all know this. Some joker on came and, 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 and spoke some. Smooth operator. Oh my God. Some pleasant <laughs> words in your ears. Oh, and you only find out later that joker was no good. Ain't had Liar. nothing. He was lying. He was a deceiver. Borrowed that soup. Right. So witchcraft. And what do you think the devil is? He's a deceiver. Mm -hmm. He's a liar. He's a thief. Wow. He wants to stop you from receiving what God has for you. Mm -hmm. See, let us not get tricked like the, like the Galatians. Let us live and, and, and walk by faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Ladies. I have nothing more to add. Just. Follow the word of God. It is it is easy to receive from God. Just just believe him. Receive him that Jesus died for you. And he went to the cross. He was crucified for us, for our sins, for anything that we've done or will do. We just have to believe that, that all is well because Jesus has paid the ultimate price. He laid down his life for you, for me. And for everyone else in this world, we always have another chance. It doesn't matter if you're in the midst of doing something right now. Jesus is right there waiting. The Father is waiting on you to say, God, you know what? I give up. I, you know what? I'm going to try this Jesus thing. I'm, I'm going to give it six weeks. I'm going to study the Bible. I'm going to listen to Penny O Covenant Christian Center with Pastor James, Sabrina, and Angela. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look for his messages on YouTube and Facebook, and I'm going to get in this word. And mm -hmm. God, I'm sick from now to the end of this year. Get in the word of God. And if you don't see miraculous changes in your life, then God is a liar. And mm -hmm. I know God is not a liar. No, not. God can't Give lie. Give God you. God won't lie. Give God you. And the thing I want to say before we close out is that when I think about it, my relationship with Christ, I think about having been married into wealth. Mm -hmm. when, I married, when I married into the wealth, everything that belonged to the person I married, I gained. Mm -hmm. So everything that belongs to Christ, I gained. And there is no prenup for Christ. I don't have to sign off something saying, okay, we, if, if we, this don't work, then everything is canceled. Because Christ already said it was finished and I don't have to worry about it. That is so Amen. relaxing. Amen. I can serve God and, and not have to worry about him throwing me to the side or kicking me to the curb. Up. No, I can I can just 
relaxing his arms and knowing if I fall or when I fall, I have an advocate with the Father. Amen. I have Christ Jesus. Right that I can, exactly. I have the Holy Spirit Love. that's there to, you know, to wash me and to cleanse me and to give Amen. me a fresh new start Amen. every single day. Amen. So it's like being born with a his promise every day. every day. Every Amen. day. So, hey, say this after me. Say, Father. Father. I believe. I believe. You sent your son Jesus. You sent your son Jesus. Just for me. Just for me. And tonight. And tonight. I receive. I receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit into my life. Into my life by faith. By faith and not by my word. And not by my word. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Be my God. Be my God. Give me clear direction. Give me clear direction and a clear heart. And a clear heart to be obedient. To be obedient and respond. And respond accordingly. Accordingly. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give Amen. God some praise. Well, hey, thank you, Lord. I want to uh, thank y'all for joining us tonight. It has definitely been a joyous time mm -hmm. once again in the word. And I pray that you take this word and you go back and you digest this word. Mm -hmm. It'll be on YouTube shortly. But I want you to know that you have to walk by faith and not by sight. Believe in God. Believe in his word. Believe what we're telling you and watch your life prosper. We're going through this pretty much line by line, verse by verse. Mm -hmm. This is what Bible study is all about. Mm -hmm. We're not preaching to you. We are teaching you. Yes. We are doing the work of pastors, mm -hmm. shepherding and teaching. So I just want to say thank y'all for joining us tonight. I pray that this word that, uh, will continually mm -hmm. be your guide. Go back, watch it. Hey, subscribe to my face, my uh, YouTube page, Pastor James Wilkinson. Subscribe, hit hit the notification bell so that so that when we post something new, you can get it. You'll know it. You'll get the notification. Pastor James Wilkinson on YouTube, and like I said, let other people know. Hey, go on YouTube and watch this. This will be good for you. We're now in chapter three. We did chapters one and chapter two. We're in chapter three, and we're gonna keep on walking until we get down to the end. So we got to know, and that's chapter six. Hey, we're going to have a good time. Amen. Uh, so with that being said, mm -hmm. I want y'all to have a wonderful evening. God bless you. And we love you. On the behalf of myself, Pastor James, my beautiful wife, co-host, Pastor Sabrina, my lovely aunt, Pastor Angela. Uh, we want to thank you and our families, the Team Wilkinson, Team Dixon, and the most beautifulest church family in all of God's creation, mm -hmm. Penny Covenant Christian Center and Penny Covenant Christian Center Facebook. Have a good evening. We'll see y'all Friday morning at 7 a.m. Peace.